with an orange tie. First, today we can talk about an scripture pa passage. Not passage, passage. The stuff that God leads us. And he says, suffering leads to endurance, and endurance leads to character, and character leads to hope. And hope doesn't disappoint because we're given the gift of God's love through the Holy Spirit. So can we light the Christ candle together as a reminder that Christ is the light of the world?
Who gets cookies? You. No, not you. Not for another 30 years at least, right? And then you can start dating.
God, that you listen to hearts as well as voices. Thank you. Amen. Our hymn is number 625, I Feel the Wind of God.
hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Hope does not disappoint. The line that stuck out to me the most. Because it seems like we get our hopes up a lot. It seems like we hope for things that don't ever happen or seem like they never will happen or just can't, right? We stand there with our fingers crossed behind a carnival game aiming for the prize that we want and it doesn't happen. We throw the can or the ball at the can and it comes within a millimeter of knocking them all over and taking home that giant stuffed animal parading it through the fair like we won something grand. One of my youth group pointed out to me this week, we could have just gone to the dollar store and paid three bucks for that thing instead of 20 for the whole exchange. I said, yeah, what's the fun of that? They paraded their little giraffe around. They both, two of them went at ski ball. And another line that interested me in this passage is the suffering produces endurance. I was talking with somebody earlier this week or last week about why is it that people who have gone through so much seem to be able to give more than anyone, seem to be willing to go out of their way to make things better for people or to do more work or to help out and lend a hand. Why is that? Why is it that people who suffer can also thrive. And for the most part, you'd never be able to tell. For the most part, you'd never know what happens to build somebody that goes on behind the scenes, that goes on behind closed doors. And even when we do know, how do those people find the strength to move forward? How do those people who are caring or nursing for a loved one at home find the strength to move forward? How does the widow or widower find the strength to put two feet on the floor out of bed in the morning and take things one step at a time? Because when you walk through somebody in that journey, you find that so many people say one day at a time, one week at a time, and it's really moment by moment. Take one moment at a time. Because you don't know what happens in the next moment that throws you off course. You don't know what goes into a life to get it to where it is. And to those who have, you might think they have always had. It reminded me of the story of Roman Emperor Julius Caesar, who we all know as a great man, as a great warrior, as a great leader, who had the power of a huge empire that wasn't yet an empire when he ruled. And the phenomenal thing about Caesar is that he started with nothing. His family had their honor stripped away, they lost, and he was a boy on his own. And one of the ways you built up your status in the Roman Empire was through your victories in battle. So he set himself out to fight, to earn back an honor and status, and he joined the army. And battle after battle, he climbed the ranks of the army until he was a leader. And until he won enough battles and was involved in enough major battles to earn the attention and respect of those in Parliament, in those of those in the Senate. And again, once he got there, it wasn't enough, and he worked his way higher and higher until crossing the Rubicon. And he said, Rome, I am enough to see you face to face, and my army will challenge you. And then a whole bunch of other stuff happens. But it's the fight, it's the grit, it's the work and the blood and the sweat and the violence that we see. It was the suffering of one man that built that up. And if you compare it to a later emperor, the son of Marcus Aurelius, if you compare it to Commodus, who was the son of an emperor and 
is a great thing. Some of those men did really nasty things. But there is a learning, there is an endurance that comes from the suffering that they endured. It reminds me of babies who grow up. And you see them and they start as these fragile little things. And then they start to toggle around and they take these spills. And there's a period in there somewhere where they're the same height as every coffee table and they have a permanent bruise on their forehead or scratches or marks because they're learning how to walk. And they fall and they endure and they bruise and they cry and we pick them up and we comfort them back to health. We comfort them to say, it's okay, you fall and you get up again and you try again. And you see them out there on the soccer fields and they're doing their things or standing staring up into space when they should be paying attention to the ball. <laughs> and we take them through school and they suffer and they hurt and we teach them things about how the world works. We see them on the ski hill and they bail and their skis go flying in every direction and they're a hundred meters down the hill and their parents are flying after them, <laughs> freaking out. And they pop back up and they're fine. And they get back on their skis and they get going. And it's a phenomenal testament to our endurance as people, to these things that we've experienced and endured that we don't often stop to consider. How are those things important to the making of who we are as adults. And a beautiful thing happened at Coffee Hour and the guys were talking about the work and how they learned to drive tractors and what the work they learned to do on the farm was. And how they had to struggle in trying to do that. How the things that they had to rein the horses on weighed probably as much as they did and they weren't quite tall enough to get it up over the horse's head and had to figure out a way to do that. They had to suffer. They had to be interested. It wasn't as easy as it was for their fathers or other farmhands to do. It's not something as simple as a grown man lifting it up and placing it on the floor. There's a testament. There's a learning process. You try and you fail and you fall down. And this is something that is so important to how we grow and develop. And it's something very new to psychology. There's a woman, a PhD, who's won all kinds of awards, and her thesis, her invention, if you want to call it, in psychology, her discovery, is something called the grit factor. And in an interview, she talks about her father, one of three kids, her father would always say, that's great, but you're not a genius. And they bring him tests and say, look, I got an A, and he'd say, yeah, but you're not a genius. And they struggled with what exactly he meant. And they were defeated by what exactly he meant. Like it wasn't good enough. Like my success maybe won't get me there. And what they learned to realize as adults was it's not about not achieving. It wasn't about not meeting the bar or not being successful. It was about the stuff that you will never have it easy. It will never all be there. You are not expected to know all or be all, but rather we have to work for it. We have to strive for it. We have to have grit in order to pursue so that we, when we fail, we keep going. It's an endurance. And it's the biggest marker of who will be successful in life. It doesn't have anything to do with IQ. It doesn't have anything to do with who you were raised by or where. It's the fact that we develop this skin, this endurance, this grittiness to keep going, to try it, to be willing and open to failure and defeat. And what does that endurance, what does that learning and grit and thick skin teach us? What does it enable us to carry and how does it affect who and what we are? And the beautiful thing about scripture is it's right there. 2,000 years ago, somebody knew this very thing. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character and character produces hope. You think that a lifetime of getting knocked down and defeated, of 
bruises and scars of failure would defeat us, that we would no longer have any will or drive to keep going. But surely, Paul, you can't really expect us to believe that hope doesn't disappoint. If anybody was watching the Raptors game a couple weeks ago, they lost by one point. One point! If that is not defeat after hope, I don't know what it is. That's like coming so close and missing by the skin of your teeth. And people freaked out. But somehow that team, they know the suffering of loss. And they have developed some sort of endurance. They know how to press on and they know how to take the feet on the chin and have since built their endurance to a level of success where when they get knocked down, they are not defeated by it. In whatever way, that hope has been inspired by endurance and the character that that endurance has built urges them onward. It's a thing that we teach our kids. It's that don't give up. Just reach just a little further. And if not next time, or if not this time, then next time. If not today, then maybe tomorrow. If not now, then someday. If not this season, then next season. And if not her, then someone else. If not this way, then that way. Because the love of God is poured into our hearts so that we may press on. And we do in so many ways, ways we don't always recognize. It's in that time that we learn and grow. And have to learn and grow some more and learn and grow some more. And we endure and grow character and that character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So that the rapture after 24 years of endurance produces enough character that produces enough hope. And the important part to pay attention to here is not that the end thing, it's the order of the things. Because so often we get it backwards and we think that the hope is what produces the endurance. The hope is what keeps us going. But it, Paul doesn't say that. And it's so important. My piano teacher always used to say, action comes before motivation. So just get on the bench and do your practicing and be quiet because <laughs> you will suffer and you'll learn endurance and you'll build character and maybe you will be hopeful of doing this thing someday. Or ever playing this deep work. It's the same kind of thing. It is the importance of the order. It is the suffering that comes before endurance. And it is the endurance that comes before character and the character that has to be there before hope. And that is such a beautiful thing because in times of suffering, how often do we have hope? It doesn't come right away. It's not the character that produces endurance. It is the suffering. It is the pain of 24 years of failure, of loss, of defeat. It is the pain and failure that builds the grit and the character. The fight to push forward. There isn't an easy way. There is no safe flight to freedom. But there is an assurance of grace. There is a promise. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. That is hope. That is the grit that enables the team after losing by one point by the skin of their teeth to get their butts back on the court and try again to push through another four quarters to victory, to have it come down and be so close again. And instead of choking, instead of getting up and saying, that's done, I'm done with suffering, I'm done with defeat, I am done. And quit, they kept going. They kept going and they won. That's 24 years. And what are the things in our life that are the same? What are the things that we persist and pursue? What are the many dangers, toils, and snares? Because it was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. I once was lost. But now I am found, was blind, but now I see.
reminder that in life, in death, in life beyond death, God loves us beyond all telling of us, telling of it, and we are not alone. Go in peace with the grace of God on your heart.